Welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, last week, well, a couple of days ago, I visited Finchingfield Camping uh, on the outskirts of the village of Finchingfield uh, in North Essex. Had a lovely day there, did a lot of sketching, a um, bit of painting. Um, now that I'm home, I'm going to try and put, uh, uh, I'm still inspired by the lovely area, so I'm going to paint a tent in a field of flowers. I uh, really like this one. So um, that's my drawing for the subject and um, let's see what we can do with it. I'm painting with acrylic today. The first thing I'm going to do is to lay on um, some basic colour. Um, try and pick up the feel of the day. Um, we had quite a lot of blue, so I'm going to use um, blue um, in the sky. There's lots of clouds. I want the light coming from the sort of left-hand side. Oh, shall we have the light coming from the right? Let's have the light coming from the right. That's that time in the morning. Um, so I'm picking up some um, some white from the palette and a touch of ultramarine not too much ultramarine to start just to get I'm working on white um, board that I've primed so um, and I'm picking up a little bit of yellow too just to get a glow from the sunlight um, on that right hand side um, need a bit of red. Forgot to put the red in my palette this morning. So squeeze some red. Don't need a lot of red. Red goes a long, long way. Very dominant colour. And a uh, bit of red with that too. I like a bit of warmth in the sky. Particularly in the tops of some of the clouds, possibly. Uh, you know, when you paint, it's all about... Um, enjoying yourself really um, quite simply um, uh, laying the colour on and just enjoying the process you know um, producing varying shapes of clouds and uh, a little bit darker that side a bit too dark but um, there we go nice bit of Nice bit of movement to that sky. Do like that. Do like to give a bit of feel, a bit of movement uh, to skies. That's always a, a good thing to do. Now, when I come down to that area, um, I'm going to paint around the uh, the bell tent. Good. Now. Gonna go a little darker with the blue as we come down because that not only is the way that sky is, but also helps to show off the bell tent itself. Well, that's good. Nice and rough. A bit more blue. Yep. Uh, quite a lot of blue this side. I always say that what you do, you know, when you're painting like the bell tent that I'm doing here the colour you use at that point you should use there as well um, because otherwise if you paint all of that side when you come to paint this side it's all um, gone a little bit um, slightly different colour so you don't really want that and it's all got a blend at the top and a little bit darker as well uh, no now we go lighter sorry just adding more white to this now so that we can show a bit of movement possibly clouds in the distance and then as we get really white we then paint over into there leaving a little bit of that underpainting showing through um, and work my way down to the um, to the horizon really or at least as far as we can see in this particular subject. Uh, 
a bit white now it's nice and light um, because the figures I've decided will be darker against the lighter background so that's all to be considered when you paint these subjects and I'm creating a flow now through just to try and get a feeling that that sky lays flat um, not blending too much clouds will go on later and then really light around the figures I'm going to paint around them to start with just so that I can see them really nothing more nothing less what I do to the right I'm doing to the left and a nice small figure there child perhaps trying to keep the flow of the paint that way and there we are that is pretty much the start of the sky now we're putting in some wispy cloud work um, bit there bit there it's the medium tone of the clouds on two little touches and of course I'm not putting them either side just either side of the tent got to carry on through but um, and then I'm just using a bit more white for their tops very white there that continues through past the tent like that and then I add a little bit of brown to that burnt umber burnt sienna something like that with blue to create a warm grey it'll be too dark with this and that's the undersides of those clouds you know the, the, the dark of course that would be on the left because the light's coming from the right so that's really pretty much um, as it uh, as we see it really so a nice interesting sky put in pretty simply pretty basic um, just quickly just going to nip the paint out of the brush a lot of paint in there um, just going to put a little bit more light in the sky a bit more warmth in that top right hand corner oh that's nice look at that so the way that lovely warm tone picks up for a little bit on top of the clouds of that I think there we are enjoy your painting you know it's all about color it's all about expression really <laughs> whether it's watercolor or oil more white just to emphasize the tops of those clouds again And one or two little touches in the distance. Remember, clouds do appear smaller as they go away into the distance. So it's quite important to do that. A little bit of sort of dull pinky grey in the distance there, just to make a definition of where the land finishes. Brilliant. We'll allow that to dry. Well, I have the um, sky in now, which uh, is coming quite well, so I'm allowed that to dry a touch. Um, now I'm going to have, um, just put it, I'll tell you what I need, it's just a, a tad of, it's, it's not an evening one, it's a day one. So I'm adding over that red, a little bit of yellow, just to try and get the feeling of warmth from the morning sun, really and I suppose really we must remember to have 
some touches of that yellow on top of those clouds. Well, just hints at that sunlight catching the top of that cloud work. So the way I'm just gently teasing that in. And that gives a um, nice sense of clouds moving across the sky with that um, sunlight catching. A lovely glow actually. Good. Now I'm looking at the landscape itself. Well, it's pretty much a sad business. Um, well, not sad as such, but it's um, it's sort of like a yellowy brown, plenty of water, plenty of white too. Um, it's a bit more yellow really than brown. Use quite a bit of white. Ooh, that's a, a mix and a half. A bit more white. Really bring that up light. Yellow. Yep. And uh, that goes on in the distance. There. Um, the bell tent there. But of course we do have um, this is just the, the very rough first markings really. Um, that's the thing with these sort of subjects um, and the, the grasses stand up there there although it looks in the center of um, the grasses but it actually isn't it's um, there's a lovely walk area uh, that um, that you that you do round to the uh, each individual site so that always makes it extremely interesting to me adding a bit more brown now as we head off down into the foreground because well, the distance has got to be very light oh and do you know i would put in some little touches of red into that too not too much purely to reflect the sun you know light needs to be reflected whatever you have in the sky you've got to have a little bit of that reflected in the land if you do that chances are you'll be well fairly successful hopefully i'm um, going to use a bit of burnt umber as well in that just to darken that in actual fact it's not burnt umber sorry it's black well there you go picked up the wrong um the wrong colour, but go with the flow. That's what they say. Um, let's not get too fussy about these these things. Uh, and that comes down into the foreground area. And this is where we begin to get quite dark. Add a bit of blue to that to darken it rather than black that's um don't need that many colors really in 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 painting um there is some bits of green too so we have to be aware that there is some tads of green within that dark color bits of green as well here and there not too much as we go up but and notice i'm painting down because everything's standing up and that's the way it would actually appear. Bit of yellow, uh, bit of green, what have I got, hooker's green, give it a little bit more sunlight now, here and there, that's it, and we continue then with the brown effect in the foreground, a bit more blue now, um, because we need it fairly dark because of the um, flower heads that are going to stand up into that area. Here we are, we come right the way down, a bit more blue, not too much. Well, it's mixing on the uh, on the board really. 
and that is the general feel that I'm looking for gradually getting rid of that dark and that just gets small and small as we go away into the distance onto a little patch of there right and then I clean the brush again just mop the paint off the brush and I'm going to then put in a nice path now this path is green because it's the grass that has been mown but it is quite a strong let's just use a bit of blue on that just to kill that green there we are so then we use a bit more yellow just to bring that back there we are lovely lovely dark green path that comes along and we can see some of that just standing up in to the outside edge well, and that path now needs to be laid flat. Notice how it makes a big difference once I pull the paint across the surface. All of a sudden that path stands flat. And it's a, there's a little bit of a greener area there too where the figures stand. So that's always useful. That path to me leads your eye into the, uh, into the um, scene itself. Good. Right, the next area will be the tent itself. Um, very white, so I need a bit more. Let's get some more white out of the uh, out of the packet. Really, is amazing the amount of white you need. Um, and I'm gonna paint it more or less as I see it now if you notice I've picked up a bit of red in that white as well because that has that warm feel from the light of the Sun particularly down the right hand side so we come to the left then it's obvious that we're uh, getting um, a little bit of shadow there so I'm bringing in a little bit of darker don't be too dark that's a little dark bring in a little bit of light into that there we are and that is that slightly darker left hand side gives a feeling of shadow whether that will need to be enhanced at all I don't know and there's a ribbing there that that would there again have possibly a bit of shadow on But it's all about picking up the sense of that of sunlight, that, that warm sunlight onto the tent itself. Now that same colour will be used at the back here. Put the lines in later. There we go. And it will be under there and under there, but of course, as it comes around the corner, it goes lovely and white again because it's in sunlight. So I'm just hinting at, um, at the shadow, but not painting it in at this stage properly. But it just gives a good feel to the overall um, tent, really. It looks as if it's. Um, got sunlight on already clean the brush and um, I'm just gonna add a bit more of this didn't put a lot of this beige in that side there we are just fill that corner in a bit there just to sharpen that up um, good that's that um, I suppose good idea to get the figures in really and um, Needs to be done with a smaller brush. Gradually working from large down to small, the brush sizes, because that's quite important with these subjects to get that right. Put my brush back in water so it doesn't dry. Acrylic is a devil for drying. 
and just trying to keep my paints damp by squeezing a little um, water onto them. Um, good. Okay, well, I'm going to paint the figures now. Um, may as well get those in. Um, it's a sunny day, right? Um, so we're going to put in the... We need some brown for the flesh colours. A um, bit of white and a touch of burnt sienna. I don't want to go too much burnt sienna. So we'll do the um, the heads first. That figure is looking down and that little figure is helping out in the distance. The arms, even a little bit darker than that perhaps. And legs. Probably wearing shorts so that's just hinting. That's all you're doing. Nothing more than hinting. Um, could have a figure with a white, I suppose. Um, but I'm going to put the red on that particular little figure there. Um, red with a bit of white in there. Um, there's a red uh, T-shirt. Like that. And uh, yeah, about the shorts, I'm not sure about that. Um, now I'm going to have blue then for the other figure, um, just purely because, um, um, well, perhaps blue is not ideal because the thing is, you're against the blue sky, so we've got to watch that. Um, I'm going to put some dark green. Totally different colour for this figure. There, like that. T-shirt again. Forgot to put the arms in on that figure, so let's let's get a bit of brown paint and uh, paint the arm in there. Is it there? Tending to the um, and the child. Well, it's like a brown, I suppose. Um, although a yellow would be nice. There we are. There we are. What about yellow? That stands out quite well. There's a little figure there just helping away with the barbecue. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, could have white shorts, I suppose, with the white of the canvas underneath. Um, now I'm using brown with some of that black. Not a great love of using black, but that squeezed out of my palette. It almost comes up burnt umber really. So that's um that was what I intended to put on my palette, which didn't um quite work out, but that's pretty normal when you paint. I'm going to use what they call a mill stick. You lay that on the side of the board or even a part of the canvas that's dry and support when you come to paint areas that have just that little bit of detail so that's this is the bench really probably old bench that stands there painted in fairly loosely that's the seating area that this figure is standing like that yeah, I think that uh, that covers as the um, bench. Good, that's successful. Then we have um, all the barbecue. That's interesting. Using a rigger for that. Using the lovely old rigger. Quite a quite a good brush that for this sort of work. And um, it um, comes in very handy. Um, and the barbecue is pretty much black, really, but um, it's not um, not brown. But let's let's go black. Um, black, very very dark. It's a bowl, really. I think they use big bowl. 
on the legs like that. There we are. At the moment it looks like a dog. Well, let's, uh, let's improve on that. I'm sure that helps immensely. Um, yeah, that's good enough. And of course, we do have a fire. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a yellow and a red to get an orangey yellowy glow. Around the top. Yeah. Quite simply to show the barbecue off. Yeah. Yep, yeah, highlights to go in. Obviously highlights to go in on all of these, so we're not too concerned. And we're gonna have white uh, shorts, I think, on that figure. Like that. Just rings of changes. Uh, and the other figure, just dark brown. Pick up a bit of dark brown there. There we are. Good, that's the figures in. Quite as simple as that. Okay, well, while we've got the, um, the rigger going, we might as well put the tent lines or the um, tent uh, supporting lines, I forget what they call them now, you ought to know. The years I um, spent camping. Obviously, some areas they'll be light which would be there that's not light enough as you can see and some areas they'll be darker all depends about the contrast of what you're painting them on really you know if if you didn't put dark ones in there you wouldn't see them and there too and perhaps a bit of dark underneath that one, but we need light on the top. There we are, that's a good old um, tent supports that are going to the, um, the pegs. Also, I've got vents in the top there. The easiest way to show a vent is a little bit of dark bluey grey. And uh, using my mill stick again, we have one there and one there. Good. They'll all show up later when we come to put highlights in. Right. Now we want darks against lights, lights against darks. We can just see in the distance a bit of distant hedging. Now, I've left that because I wasn't sure whether I needed that, but I am going to put that in. And that is a very bluey green. Extremely bluey green and fairly dark too. Um, so let's start here with this edging. It needs to be darker than that. And as always, to darken it, you don't use the black. You use a bit more uh, blue. It's just distant hedging. Always make your distant hedges bluey grey because it's um, vital that um, they sit back nicely. Quite a clump there in the distance. A bit of hedging. Not going to take them, well, maybe a little bit there, just a hint at some distant there. Um, and there will be a hint of a bit of a distant field. In other words, the hedging over there. But as always, very blue. Just gives a feeling of depth behind the campsite. Okay. 
Okay, so that's the background, a bit of background just put in. Now I'm going to paint the um, the foreground, really. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a lovely little fresh little picture. It's coming along quite well. Still using the old mill stick for support. Now to start with, we have dark rich browns. So rich browns is... I'm actually going to use burnt sienna with cadmium red maybe just a touch of black in there now this is where it becomes quite important because what you do here is um, more or less the finished product uh, in this particular area so there's one or two of these just dotted around and when you do this sort of thing it does need to be um, to be done very quickly um, because and also as you come into the foreground these little dots become um, a bit um, a bit more bold brush strokes varying little ferns and little bits and pieces and of course they're attached to grasses so Yep. and as you come into the foreground you get a few more a bit bolder and some good old sort of spiky bits that come up into that not too many just got to watch you don't overdo this I'm telling you because I'm basically telling myself that um, really don't need to overdo this but lots of heads around there there we are and there are some here to match that other side obviously as you go away into the distance you wouldn't actually see them but um, you would at this point it's going up a hill I believe so um, do need to show that good so that's the um, one or two of the darker areas and we do have some some more dark warm areas in the foreground and these are more or less a bit more detailed um, so sort of like um, some form of grasses you know in amongst that they are dark but as we come forward we need to make certain parts of this considerably lighter uh, it's a wildlife area or a wild an area left to go wild um, purely because the owner is keen on back to nature sort of feel to the site which to me is um, pretty fantastic you know the sort of thing that um, you know if I went camping that's the sort of um, site I'd like I'd like to feel as if I was in amongst the um, um, the rural setting, really, you know, I wouldn't want a campsite that was um, really um, all um, pristine and, you know, I mean, it is, it is a lovely site, but it's got that air of um, um, ruralness, if you wish. I think that's the word. Okay, going to work forward now. Right, now what I'm putting on now is some lighter, little touches of white to start with. One or two little flecks of white here, uh, very, very small, just to um, give a sense that there are some little uh, wild flowers. A uh, bit more white, dots of white, just dotted around all over the place, that's it. And as we come forward they get bigger into um, more or less flower heads really and you can put them in wherever you feel you need them in amongst this darker color there will be some here a bit smaller a bit smaller there gradually take it away into the background there will be just some there not too many um, 
There we are, some bigger flower heads there, one or two there. Lovely. That's looking pretty good. Then finally, there is a blue, and it's a purpley blue, not dissimilar to the to the la lavender field that I painted. So a bit of red, a bit of blue, a bit of white. So it's a good old lavender colour. Hope I can pick that colour up um, with my colours that I have here. At least I should be able to pick up somewhere near it. A bit more red in there to there we are. That's probably as good as I'm going to get. And I've just got to remember that it is quite light. A bit of green with that. That may help. A little bit of green with that blue. That may help to give me my colour that I'm looking for. Right, now add white. And that is what I'd class a bit more blue. There we go. You can see I'm struggling to get this colour. <laughs> there we are. Let's just see how light that is. Not light enough. Considerably lighter than that required. Almost white, I suppose. That's it. There we go. Put some darker colour on that soon. And uh, darker back edge there, like that. See that? The way you tint the underside of that blue. And all of a sudden, you've got the white, the light and the dark. Got to vary the colours a little bit. And the more you come into the dark area, the more you actually see the light area. So keep plenty of white on the brush, particularly on the right hand side, because that's where the sunlight is catching. And of course, these get quite large as you come forward. Clumps of them perhaps. Brought in there, a little bit coming in on that right hand side. Then you get the darker blue just catching the underside. Um, start this side here, there, there, there. There we go. And that all of a sudden creates that lovely feel of flowers that is um, not good with the names of flowers, me, but um, no doubt some of you people out there will probably know uh, what sort of these blue flowers are but as I always say to people you know I'm not too concerned what they are it's just vital that you can depict them and leave it up to the viewer to decide um, you know what they feel they they really are which is what I tend to do. Okay, now I'm going to use a fairly well loaded light brown brush and it's going to be too well loaded um, and I'm now flicking up just the stems and one or two areas of lighter colour. Um, let's just think. There we go, just in amongst that, you know, um, it's a fine dividing line between adding too much and not enough. Um, and that is where um, I suppose the, the skill of the artist comes in, I don't know, but um, it's quite important that we show enough of this sort of um, stem work to depict without actually need a rigor for this really there we are 
one or two little light medium tone stems in the background uh, some of it's just over painting areas that we've already uh, put in just to give it a density feel really uh, don't want to overdo it all the time it's vital that this sort of thing is not over shown and um, we're very white or very light sort of sad areas in the foreground probably a few more of these than there really is notice how I'm being much bolder with the brush strokes in the foreground should be too it's vital that we we, we create a foreground feel there we are one or two little dots and dashes here and there one or two smaller dots and dashes in the foreground but um, gives that sort of wild life look to it wild meadow look um, time to go for a yellowy centre to some of these flower heads and more like a daisy sort of feel I think so we give some touches of uh, yellow in the centres of some of those particularly the larger ones but they are the white ones not the blue ones um, gone rather mad with the blue not many white uh, white ones here so no, that's not a problem and maybe a little touch of so like the odd little red um, touch here and there I always think that's a good thing to have in these wild meadows two little touches of red even in amongst the blues that you've got there you know it, it gives a bit of warmth to the whole thing and some little touches of pure yellow like that that's good yep lovely collection of flowers in the foreground Just some finishing touches really. Gonna go dark green with like quite a quite a bluey green. Um, not too dark initially, but because you have some dark greens in amongst these flowers. And it's always vital to show up these dark areas as well. We don't want to get too bogged down purely with with light so I know I put the dark in earlier but um, there is some greenery amongst that so I'm I'm just hinting at some touches of green here particularly in this foreground area on the left I want that to be sort of quite shady and quite dark so dragging the brush across the paper creating um, greens coming into the foreground where the highlights are two little touches in the background there always will be some touches of green in these meadows quite um, considerable greens along that edge nice lights and darks a bit of green there good Okay, and I'm going to add a little bit of brown to this browny green. So a bit of white in there, a bit of brown um, to this edge of the track there. It's not a track, it's where it's been mown really uh, for the um, for the I suppose the residence really to actually um, 
into their little area which is um, a lovely little touch where you log into that sort of uh, little little space of your own in amongst the wildflowers there we are and that just helps and then finally there's just the light, low lights and the highlights well the low lights are dark areas but let's put in the highlights first and the highlights are more or less white really um, um, right we've got a nice highlight down that edge there see the way that picks it up against that sunlight um, coming in from the left so it's just purely white and there's a lovely light area there coming down and then of course the ridge of that would probably pick up a bit of light yep if I can get enough on the brush to um, attend to that certainly get enough on the brush to attend to that bit of highlight there there we are good that's that and that's that that's looking good and of course the little caps with his vents there just hint at those that's sufficient we do have highlights on the figures so just a touch there touch there nice to have the figures fairly dark actually uh, so we don't want too many highlights on that and all the face of the child the body there we go a bit more a bit more of that now we look ooh, and of course i've forgotten the highlights on it to the bench that that's quite important because at the moment they're standing out a little bit too strong so it's um on top yeah like that there we are that's the bench and of course the highlights on the rim of the barbecue down the bowl and the legs now all of a sudden the barbie is revealed and um the what i call the low lights <laughs> Um, which really is shadows now we'll start with the shadows on the figures first it's a purpley color um, so they could be a bit under the neck uh, it's down the arm there left hand side round by the jean the, the shorts the bottom of the leg there a tad on the shorts there that's it and the same here a bit of shadow work no need for too much actually um, otherwise it's um and of course shadow where they stand always an important area to paint in in a shadow color let's go a little bit darker with that Just to show a hint at shadow there. Yep, that's looking good. And the shadow could very well go along there and up. Just a tad, just to extend that. Good, and this same blue shadow um, wouldn't show too much here, but all it needs is a bit like that, just drawn in with the finger. See that? bit on there and then just draw it in with the finger like that bit like that draw it in with the finger 
good. Okay, um, kind of a bit heavy with that, but let's see if we can just pull that back. I'll highlight that in a sec. Oh, and maybe just a tad down there as well. Uh, that's another area to show up, a bit of highlight uh, or low light, whichever you forget what I'm working on here. Um, and of course, under the rim at the back of the tent, a bit too heavy with this, but and there's always a line where it pulls in like that, up to there like that. And then of course we add a bit more white to it and just draw that in and it finishes somewhere there like that bit of touch added there just blend that a little bit more there nothing too heavy there and this gets less and less there's a corner there that you may see there we are so that's the bell tent looking quite good just want to put a highlight down there just to improve on that on that shadow that we've got coming in and a highlight down there these highlights do um, help an awful lot um, as I say they've either got to be darker or lighter and in this case it's lighter quite a top to that edge there and just show that nice light edge there that comes down and perhaps a little bit on there perhaps a little bit on there um, but on that ridge there we are yep looking quite good to me behind the tent will be some shadow so um, a bit of a purpley shadow I suppose bit of red going in there right and of course that will show up within the grasses so although it's quite thick to start with it actually breaks up and just catches the top of the flower heads there just want to see where that sort of finishes at that point always nice to have a little bit of shadowing there and of course we will then have some shadowing here along the edge of that uh, sun coming from the right and that's that lovely little sort of soft shadow use it use, use your fingers um, to pull up and create see where well, I'm creating a shadow edge to the to that um, grasses there um, because that's quite important that, that that is in shadow and also there will be a casting shadow on the grass running across like that and that needs to be pulled up into what's that use your fingers that's good see the way I'm creating that shadow then that comes down then across the grasses like that and um, then I'll just pull it across like that so that's the shadow from that and I'm just going to use a dry brush now just to drag that up so you've got my fingers too messy and soften that across like that brilliant as I say, it's all about shadows, really, you know. Um, finishing of a painting is always about shadows. Just going to put some final um, highlights on the grass here. Because this is in sunlight. So we need the grasses to have a little bit of highlight at that point. Just about there just about there just to show where there is some real sort of sunlight onto the grass area and see the way sun you know shadows make 
a picture. You know, they really do enhance a feeling of um, of light, and that includes any light areas like that. Maybe you'll see the odd little patch of light green just here, but you wouldn't see a great deal. You may even see some light little grasses just standing up, just a little bit there. But other than that, it's um, pretty much um, shadow, really. And I'm just going to put some little bits of shadow in amongst my grasses just to ring the changes there. Uh, always good to have a little bit of shadow work. Deep dark shadow. I'm starting in the bottom right hand corner. That's probably too dark so let's go a bit softer than, with that. Always good to start in a corner where it's not going to sort of show too much. I want that to be quite dark and dull in that corner anyway. There we go. One or two little touches. Drag the brush. Or as I put it, spoil the brush. Which is basically what I'm doing, but there you go. And I'm going to drag some red into that too. Blues, reds. Always interesting, always seems to work together. And that is too much red, so I'll just get another slightly damp brush and just drag it up and gradually lose it, really. In actual fact, it's not a bad idea to use that larger brush to do the. Um, that's better. There we are. Don't want to be too fussy. bit more shadow, deeper shadow in the foreground. Always nice to give perspective. A bit more red in your shadows in the foreground. Um, always good to do that. And just a bit of hazing as we go away up above and the lovely wildflower meadow at that point. There we are. Um, I think we're getting there. I think we can almost safely say that's it. Okay, well I've just taken the um, the tape off around the edge. So it gives a nice feel of what we've done this morning. And um, now I'm just going to sign it if the brush is loaded correctly. Um, it needs a rigger that points. I'm going to sign it lightly in this dark corner. I don't like the signature to stand out too much, but there we are. A very enjoyable morning. Um, looking at painting um, a view from that lovely campsite on the edge of Finch and Field, Finch and Field camping. Had a lovely day over there painting the lavender fields and uh, had a wander around, made some sketches, took some photographs. Like the idea of this sort of bell paint, sorry, bell tent or TP or whatever they are, and um, with the wildflowers in front. Hope you've enjoyed that. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel. I'll be uploading very more, uh, a, a lot more soon. And if you enjoyed that, please subscribe. That is an acrylic of Finchingfield Camping Site.